Hey everyone, welcome to the Slam Podcast. I'm Benjamin Reese. I've been the speaker for this week, and I have three wonderful gentlemen from Shreveport, Louisiana, here to speak with us about their time at Slam. So, if you guys could introduce yourselves, just say your name and uh, what grade you're going into, uh, and we'll start there. I'm Henry Simon, and I'm going into 11th grade. Nice. Um, Aiden Crow, and I'm going to be a freshman. I'm Will Daniel, and I'm going to be a freshman also. Awesome. Well, Will, we'll start start with you. If you could just kind of explain um, what you all have been doing with Slam this week in terms of service projects, and uh, what what's that? What does that look like for your experience here? Yeah. So this week we've been going to an apartment complex, and we've just been entertaining children. You know. Painting faces. That's why my my face is a little bit blue. <laughs> yeah, but excellent. Yeah, we've just been playing with them, having a good time. Nice and like doing like Bible teachings as well. Is that been yes, part sir. of the experience? Yes, sir. So every every day we have them sit down and Kyle reads them a Bible verse. Nice or, or story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and you guys have like a theme every week. Is that right? Yes, sir. Today's theme was when life changes. when life changes, God is with you. That's cool. I like yeah. that. Cool. And so, Aiden, what has been your uh, part of this operation? What have you been doing mostly? I've been mostly hanging out with a lot of the kids. We have kids from all age groups mm-hmm. and all backgrounds, and we like to play soccer with them. We play basketball with them. Yeah. We just run around with them. They get on our backs, and we just. Just run around. around the grass. Yeah. 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 How is the sports like? You've been playing some soccer with them as well. Oh yeah, they're way better than me. <laughs> Dude, they're so good. Soccer's not yeah. your game. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. No. no sir. <laughs> You're a runner. Runner. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you can keep up with them, but just mm-hmm. their soccer skills are a little bit intense. Yes, sir. Yeah. You often find that in those communities. Like I get kids destroy me in soccer as well. So don't feel bad. That's all right. And then Henry, what has your experience been like in at the camp and I've just been trying to get to know the kids on a little bit more personal of a level Mm -hmm. because I find that once you get there, you can more easily talk about God. Hmm. And And can you uh, tell us like maybe one story or uh, a person that you've gotten to know and something about their story that you've learned? Um, Well, there was a girl named Natalie and we were talking, we were kind of doing sidewalk chalk on a basketball court. Mm Mm-hmm. And I just straight up, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you because Kyle's probably curveball it out someday or sometime today. Mm -hmm. The theme of the day is when life is scary, God is still with you. Hmm. So she goes, oh, well, that's touching because, you know, I've fallen asleep with gunshots every few nights. And I was like, what? Hmm. How old are you? She's like 10. Hmm. She just shrugged it like it's no big deal. It happens all the time. It made me feel pretty sheltered. <laughs> yeah, because that's not your experience. Yeah, uh, where you're from It's like I mean, where we're listening from, we to have, gunshots. We have we have a lot of gun crime, but we're not near it. Right. Hmm. Aiden, is there any stories that have st- stuck out to you in your experience working with kids? Um. Well, we had one. I don't know if I experienced it uh, personally, but there was one kid who. Was a little rat. Uh, he was a little rowdy, <laughs> and he would go around punching us, kicking us. Not in a uh, way that would hurt us too much because he was a smaller kid. But right, but causing some problems. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, and he was with um, one of our kids' uh, moms earlier that day, and she was talking with him, and he said he was mad, hmm. and she asked, "Why are you mad?" Because, and then he said, "Because I'm sad." She said, why are you sad? And he said, well, my sister, um, his, him and his mom and his dad, they all came over to the States and they had to leave his sister back in Honduras, I think. Hmm. And he just hasn't uh, had the chance to see her in a long time. And I guess like being away from my sister, I know how I would feel. I would not, I would be scared for her. I'd be worried about right. her. Yeah. And I don't know if they have contact with her because it's so far away. It's mm-hmm. international. And, yeah, I thought that was a story. 
Yeah, getting to know their individual stories. And I guess we should say that New Horizon is primarily a Hispanic community. There's a lot of immigrants and refugees there. So um, you guys are kind of there providing them a place to be in a safe environment and uh, some learning experiences that they probably wouldn't have access to outside of uh, you guys coming in there and, and giving that to them. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. William, is there any, any lessons or things that you're thinking about that have, has resulted from doing this kind of service project? Yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of touching talks that I've had with kids, mm-hmm. but one that's stood out to me is one this boy named Demarcus. Mm-hmm. He's from Mexico. And I I was just talking to him and I was like, so are you from here? And he was like, well, I mean, I don't really know. And I was like, what do you mean you don't know? He was like, well, I just don't really know. And I was like, why don't you know? And he was like, there's so much going on. I just don't ever like think. And I was like, Hmm. yeah, it was just, I was so confused. And I was like, well, do you know what state you're in? And he was like, uh, uh, Tennessee. And I was like, yeah, you're in Tennessee. You know what city? He was like, he thought for like a couple minutes and then he was like, yeah, I'm in Nashville. And I was like, yeah, you are. And I don't know. It just, it made me realize how much those kids are going through Hmm. and how like it made me feel so much more protected, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's quite a story to think about, like, the the instability mm-hmm. that that child is speaking from. Yeah. If he doesn't, if he can even articulate that there's been so much that's happened in his life, it's hard to piece together all that he has experienced. Like, he doesn't even really know how to talk about his origins. Yeah. Which uh, we could say, theologically, if we want to uh, segue into the Bible— one of the things that Jesus wants to give his disciples is a new origin story that we're not born from the earth, but we're, we get to be born from above and we can be secure in that identity. And I certainly hope for that child that he'll come to know that, uh, find that stability in knowing his heavenly father, which yeah. is what we're trying to do. We're trying to demonstrate the love of the father for these kids. So mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Any other thoughts, any, any final, uh, notes you would like to make about your experience here with slam have you felt like it's um encouraged your own faith in terms of like oh, yeah. how you're thinking about serving others how you're thinking about your relationship with god what has been your experiences that god has been doing inside of you during the slam opportunity it's just opened my eyes hmm. mm-hmm. i mean there were a bunch of little girls there who when kyle starts telling the story for the day they're like no 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 no, no i'm gonna stop you there and then they start telling the story. I mean, it's for the most part, it's right. Hmm. But you're like, wow, these kids in like these really dark circumstances, not only have just like the biggest smile on their face, hmm. like nothing's wrong. They know Jesus. They're comfortable with Jesus. And hmm. we're sitting here just helping them through that relationship. Right. So it really made me feel like I am called to be God's messenger. Hmm. Well, that's cool, Henry. Any other kind of thoughts about what God has been doing in you all this this week? Um, it showed me like to reach out and help a community doesn't mean going and doing uh, things like picking up stuff around their place or gardening or painting a house or building a fence. You could just go talk to them and just mm-hmm. hang out with them and see what's going on with them. And that could really affect um, them and how their life is going and not just doing things that uh may not be as useful as like getting in touch with their feelings and getting in touch yeah, with yeah getting to mind. know them that personal touch that's that's pretty important to Jesus's ministry to yeah. get to know people on an individual basis touch them look into their eyes make sure he calls them by their name things like that and you're that's a cool lesson that you've picked up from this this time yeah William what about you <clears throat> yeah like Henry said it's really just opened my eyes a lot hmm. cuz it just makes me realize how great I have it at home. Hmm. And I just feel like I, like the Lord is reaching out to me to get to know them personally hmm. and to hear their stories because everyone has a different story. Yeah, that's, and, that's a great point. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, I am just really excited and happy to hear about your experiences and what you guys are thinking through. And we got a couple more days here at slam that we're going to continue to get into the word, try to, uh, try to even process further some of these experiences that that you have all had, but it's uh, wonderful to hear from you guys. I appreciate you coming on this podcast and sharing your stories with us all. Yes, sir. Thank you for having us. Yeah. All right. We'd be glad to come here.